invasive plants in Campbell River. Invasive plants are plants that have been moved from their native place to a new place where they grow much, much better. They grow so much better that they can have tremendous negative environmental impacts. They typically outcompete all the native plants and they degrade habitat. They also have a tremendous economic impact and so they can get into road infrastructure, into waterways and sewer lines and cost millions of dollars in damage to infrastructure. So they have economic costs as well. To deal with invasive plants, we need multi-year plans. We can't just go and cut out the broom. We need to cut out the invasives, but then spend money to buy native plants to plant in the area and then care for those plants. <laughs> infestation. Lamium forms a dense mat in the understory in the lowest levels and this blocks growth of larger plants like shrubs and trees. So for example this dug fir will have been dropping cones and seeds down here hoping to create seedlings that will grow to replace this tree when it gets old. Where you have lamium however the seedlings can't grow and so we have no young trees that will be able to replace this mature tree when it reaches the end of its life. We're standing about 10 meters off the bike path between, behind Springbok Road. We've come along a little path that's been well worn by a wheelbarrow and we can see where yard waste has been dumped instead of being uh, properly disposed of in our yard waste facilities. Uh, one inadvertent wheelbarrow can create an infestation like this, which is about 15 square meters, that will take hundreds of hours of volunteer labor to clean up. Unlike a, a garbage bag of litter, this is biological pollution. It reproduces and gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> seawalk just south of Rotary Park and we've got a tremendously large English ivy infestation. Ivy parasitizes large trees and so it sends little tiny roots into the tree trunk to attach to the sap. However, the concern for us in Campbell River is that the ivy adds a huge amount of mass to the tree. So when we get a big wind coming in from the ocean, this tree is going to be a lot more susceptible to wind damage and falling down than it would be if it wasn't carrying this huge excess mass of ivy. Our concern in Campbell River is, of course, our dug fir trees are really important for eagles to perch and eat their meals, and also as eagle nest trees. We're standing just off Mert Thompson Trail in the Campbell River estuary beside a knotweed infestation. Knotweed is a problem because it forms dense thickets and blocks out native plants and degrades uh, streamside habitat. So in particular, it's a real, uh, really risky plant for salmon habitat. Uh, knotweed has pretty shallow roots, so when the water comes and washes up on here, we end up with bank erosion. Now the amazing thing about knotweed is its reproductive rate. It reproduces by underground rhizomes. This particular infestation was about 10 meters square five years ago. We've been treating it for five years and you can see now it's been greatly reduced, but it's still hanging in there. Knotweed's growth rate is also amazing. So it can grow about eight centimeters a day, 60 centimeters each week. And unfortunately, every single part of this plant can make a new plant. So if a piece of this falls into the river, it can create a new infestation downstream. But in the case of the Campbell River estuary, because of the tidal inflow, it can also create more infestations upstream. On Mert Thompson Trail, we've been treating six infestations over the last five years, and we're down now to three much, much smaller infestations. So we have a hope of eradicating this plant from the Campbell River estuary. <laughs> Just off Mert Thompson Trail, right near the end in the Campbell River estuary, in the middle of an infestation of yellow flag iris. So this is a pretty plant, but pretty invasive. 
It creates dense mats in estuaries where it likes the wetness and then it traps sediment. So yellow flag iris is a danger for our salmon habitat because it actually can raise the water level and change how water moves. It reproduces with its underground roots and so to get rid of it we have to dig down and dig out these big wet mucky rhizome balls and basically cart them right off site. So this is really hard work and we can thank um, the strategic um, forest fire fighting crew when they're not busy they've put in hours and hours of really hard labor digging out these big root mats. One really fun invasive plant removal job is cutting the flower heads of the yellow flag iris. So that's a great job where you can spend an hour cutting off flower heads so that these don't reseed and create new plants. It's the easiest invasive plant removal project that Greenways has. <laughs>Parsnip is not invasive, but cow parsnip looks very similar to a very dangerous invasive plant called giant hogweed. Giant hogweed looks basically exactly like this, except everything about it is giant. So the flowers get to be one and a half meters in size. The leaves can be about a meter in size, and it can grow to be about five meters tall. Uh, cow parsnip otherwise looks very much like giant hogweed. You'll notice though the leaf is a little more rounded. Giant hogweed has a much more serrated leaf. Now if you think you see giant hogweed, please call Greenways Land Trust or you can call the Ministry of Forests. We have no giant hogweed currently in town. If we did, we'd have a SWAT team come out our early detection rapid response team would come out and deal with it within 24 hours. The reason for that is that giant hogweed is incredibly toxic. If I were to rub my hand on the leaf or the stem, it's got little tiny hairs that have a toxin that cause disfiguring permanent burns. It has phototoxicity, so if the sap on the skin gets exposed to the light, somebody can be disfigured for life. So if you're interested in learning more about invasive plants, you can visit our website at Greenways Land Trust or the Coastal Invasive Species website, or give us a call and we would love to get you involved in any of our invasive species uh, programs. Thank you.